about quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Paul was in prison. He was in chains. And he was uh, had a positive outlook about the future. He was warm that we're looking at the future as being uh, good, being one that he can rejoice in. That's the reason why he can, he was saying that rejoice in the Lord always. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any difference what your condition is, you can rejoice in the Lord. Amen. We, anytime you were in prison, uh, the, the Roman prison wasn't, wasn't like it in the prison law today. We have to realize that in the Roman prison, it was kind of like a dungeon. Build a lot of them into the earth where you wasn't treated like a human being. You were more or less treated like an animal. Mm. And they, everywhere and everything you do, you had change on you. And they was in control of your body as long as you were there. And if you didn't do what was expected of you, you was beaten by the Roman soldier. So Paul understood all of this once he was there, I'm pretty sure for a while, that he was put in prison so many times, he knew what to expect. But the thing of it is, the people, you know, they were the Philippians, they were the one that was most generous to him when he was in prison. They sent for his, uh, they took care of his necessities time and time again mm -hmm. because they loved Paul and they believed, they believed in him because he was <coughs> the one that was preaching the gospel to him. He was the one that helped them along their Christian journey during that time. And even though, if you were caught preaching the gospel, uh, preaching in the name of Jesus Christ, you were in trouble. They were going to uh, pers persecute you. Mm -hmm. uh, they would put you in jail like uh, Paul was. He didn't do anything. He was just preaching and teaching people about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why he was put in jail. Paul, before this time, his name was Saul. that we remember, you see it in the Bible there. Mm -hmm. uh, and he used to persecute Christians because he thought he was doing the right thing. But now that Paul, now that the shoe was on the other foot, Paul understood what was going on. And well, long before this time, he understood what was going on because Jesus was the one that taught him a lesson when he was on his way to Damascus to persecute more Christians. They, well, Jesus knocked him off of his horse, and when he was down on the ground, he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? And Jesus told him what he, he wanted him to do. And Paul then argued with him. When he seen this bright light shining up on him in the face, he knew it had to be been the Lord. Amen. But he didn't know exactly who it was. But he knew it was somebody with a lot of power. And he figured that this is the one that I should have been serving all along. The kings and everybody, they can only do so much. But this person that knocked me down to the earth, he's the one who could do all things. Amen. No matter what. And Paul said, uh, after he left, and he went to a place where Jesus had told him that he needed to go. This one he was saw. And he told him to go there and there was a man there that would tell him what he, what he had to do to be saved. And what he had to do to be a Christian. And what he had to do to work for the Lord. And he went there and, and, and all of the time that he was going to this particular place. And, and after he was knocked down on his, off of his horse and was going to this particular place, he was blind. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to lead him around and tell him, you know, uh, and show him where to go. But after he went there and, and he done exactly what the Lord told him to do, 
this man that was there, he, you know, he baptized him and everything. And after that, the scales fell from his eyes and he could see once again. And Paul was thankful. He's Paul at this time. And he was thankful for the Lord Jesus Christ, just showing his power what he could do. Amen. In the Old Testament, it was God that mostly uh, was showing individuals, well, he wasn't showing them, he was telling them like Moses. He would get Moses and he would tell him where to come and the cloud would over uh, shadow whatever he was, the tabernacle or the top of a mountain or wherever he was going and say, and tell Moses that this, well, at the particular time when he went to the mountain, he told Moses to take off your sandals. This is a holy a place. Holy place. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we want to make sure that we understand whenever we are serving the Almighty God that we are supposed to uh, act accordingly. You know, Amen. Word, we are supposed Amen. to act like we are God's servant, the one Amen. that he's relying on to do the right thing. And he's relying on us to show him a lot of respect. All mm -hmm. the respect we can probably possibly give him. Amen. And we found out that in this particular subject here, uh, Philippians chapter 4, and verse 4 is where we begin, and it goes all the way to verse 8. But it could go, we could go all the way to the end of this chapter talking about Paul and the things that happened to him. And the same thing could happen to us today if we don't serve the Lord as we're supposed to serve. We'll find out that the Lord loves us, but he will also chastise us Amen. for our wrongdoing and our ability to follow instruction. Uh, we have commandments from the Lord in the New Testament that we have to do. And when we don't do those things, we are punished or going to be <laughs> punished. Don't ever think that the Lord is not going to uh, punish you for doing wrong. Maybe it hasn't happened yet. Uh, maybe you think he has uh, forgotten. But your mm -hmm. day is coming. Amen. So you can keep that in mind. We, as children of God, must realize that whenever he makes a statement, whenever the scripture says that we don't do it, like and say uh, in a fourth chapter of Philippians here we said there, therefore my brethren is dearly beloved and long I long for my joy and crown so stand fast in this Lord my dearly beloved. He's talking to well some of the brothers here and we will go on down here where he's making a way uh, uh, verse 4 where he says rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice let your moderation be known unto all men the Lord is at hand mm -hmm. and we understand when he say moderation let your moderation be known unto all men the Lord is at hand. We want to make sure that we understand when he say your moderation. And we know sometimes we get carried away. Mm -hmm. and we don't understand when we say moderation. But when we are given, we know what moderation is. Mm -hmm. But when we are receiving, we don't understand what moderation is. You hold your hand out, you want them to continue to, to fill your hand up. Mm -hmm. But we shouldn't be that way. We should keep everything, let every man know, let everybody know. I'm a Christian, you know, I believe in moderation. I'm only going to do what I'm supposed to do because there is someone else that needs to help the same as I'm having. They need to give the same as I'm giving. They need to share the same as I am sharing. But we want to make sure that it, we realize that it is better to give than it is to receive Amen. at all times. We want to remember that and, and tell our children those things because they are young, they're coming up, 
and they don't understand what we mean sometimes when you say we're only going to do a little bit this for you. They want you to do whatever they want you to do. If they want a new cell phone, no matter how much it costs, they want you to buy that. And you were trying to tell them all the time, this one work just as good as this one. Mm -hmm. It got the same features, features on it as the other one. But this one costs seven hundred and some dollars, and this one costs four hundred and some. And they want the one that costs seven hundred and some. The thing it is, we need to teach them about moderation. Mm -hmm. This is what the Lord is telling us. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Your requests, you remember when you were praying, when you asked the Lord for whatever it is you need. I mean, you have to have what's need. In other words, you're not praying for the things that you want. You're praying for the things that you need, hoping that the Lord will supply your every need. But the thing of it is, you want to make sure that you need the things that you're praying for. You don't want to ask the Lord for everything you can think of. You're saying that, Lord, I'm going to ask you for this. I'm going to ask you for that. I'm, and I'm going to see exactly what it is that you're going to give me. And we know that the scripture tells us, be careful for nothing. nothing. Amen. This verb is present tense. We are not to live in a continuing state of worry. Mm -hmm. There are times we ought to be concerned, but Paul is telling us not to live in a const constant state of anxiety. This leads to the next phrase. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be, be known to God. Notice the phrase, with thanksgiving. When things fall apart in our lives, we tend to lose a thankful perspective. Mm -hmm. Paul tells us it's all right to bring our request to God, mm -hmm. but we should do it with thanksgiving. He used a Greek, Greek word for thanksgiving, which is its root means grace. Thanksgiving is an appropriate response to God's grace, even during difficult difficulties. We are recipients of the undeserved favor and blessed blessings of God. We are to ask for the things that we need with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Be thankful for everything that we have, everything that we receive. We need to thank the Lord even before we receive what it is that we're asking for. We don't know if he's, he's going to uh, grant our request, but we need to thank him for in advance, like he's already given it to us. Amen. We need to stay focused on the things that is spiritual. Amen. We say most of the time now we stay focused on things that is, uh, well, I guess you could say material, material things. Mm -hmm. We have a materialistic mind about most of the things. We need to make sure that we understand the word of God and abide by each and every last sentence in the scripture that we are supposed to do. I know sometimes it's hard to find them exactly all of the things that the Lord want us to do, but we don't want to be like this young rich ruler was mm -hmm. when Jesus was telling him all about uh, what he has to do to be saved. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he told him, the last things that he told him that he had to do to be saved is to 
sell all of his belongings and follow me. This is what Jesus was telling him. Mm -hmm. And they said that the young ruler went away sad because he had a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And what it was, it didn't say, but he said he was a lot. He said that he was a, a rich man. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't going to give up his uh, richness to follow Jesus. And we know that that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. Because we need to do what the scripture is asking us. Like, did Jesus say, like, sell everything you have and follow me? That's what we are supposed to do. For well, the reason being, it is Jesus who gave us this stuff in the first place. Amen. And the reason why I call it stuff is because that's what most of it is. We buy it in a six months or three months, or three months, six months, maybe a year, it's all piled up in the garage. Mm -hmm. It's piled up in the, uh, <laughs> oh, a spare room in the house. Uh, we bought another, some people, you know, they buy other storage houses and put them outside. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, looking at a lady not too long ago and she opened the door to her uh, storage house and stuff just stuff all around the ground. Oh, <laughs> this was much. not a small storage house. This was a large storage mm -hmm. house. And I'm saying to myself, she lived here by herself and she got all of this stuff. Yeah. She has a big house. And I don't know how much stuff she has in there. But looking at this outside, she couldn't have any really inside. But we sometimes get carried away. We don't know what enough is. That's the reason why Jesus is telling us, let your moderation be known. You, know, you can show somebody, you know, this, I'm not buying this because I'm with you and you buy stuff, and you looking at me like, are oh, you going to buy something? <laughs> These are the things that we don't need to do just because your neighbor is doing it. We realize that we love the Lord, we love each other, and we sometimes <clears throat> follow in each other's footsteps instead of following follow in, in Jesus' footsteps. We don't want to get away from uh, our undeserved favor from the Lord, which is grace. Mm -hmm. We need God's grace each and every day and all of our lives. Without his grace, we will, wouldn't be able to uh, follow in Jesus' footsteps and be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. We wouldn't be able to say to each other, you know, may the Lord continue to bless you and keep you. And may the Lord always remember you in all of your things that you do. We need to be like uh, Hezekiah was when the prophet came to him and said, Hezekiah, get your house in order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where you're going to die and live no more. And the scripture says, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he began to pray and tell the Lord all of the things that he's done. Amen. And before the prophet could get across the yard, the high wall, the out of yard, going back to his house, I'm assuming, and the word of the Lord came to him, so he came back to Hezekiah and told him, said, Hezekiah, the Lord has heard your prayer. Mm -hmm. He's given you 15 mm -hmm. more years. Amen. I wonder sometime would he do the same for us? Of course he will, if we are one of his chosen to uh, preach the gospel in a way or tell someone in a way that uh, the Lord wants you to do this, the Lord wants you to do that, because it's not like it was when Moses was up on the earth, mm -hmm. when God talked to him face to face. Only Moses couldn't see the Lord, but the Lord could see Moses. He could talk to him. But he didn't talk to Hezekiah. He sent a prophet to talk to him and tell him what he was going to do and what he wanted him to do. And I want to sometimes, if the Lord come to us, or send somebody to us, an angel or somebody, and, and will we believe them, or will we pay attention to them? 
Uh, will we follow the instruction that he's going to give us, or has given us? Uh, some of us is kind of superstitious, you know? Mm -hmm. We don't want nobody to come in the house after dark. <laughs> <laughs> This is something that I guess you'll say that old people used to do it a long time ago. If you didn't get there before dark, you didn't get in some of the people's house. <coughs> but what would happen if an angel were to show up on your doorstep? You know, no matter what time, it'd be 10 o'clock at night, 2 o'clock in the morning, would you let them in? They knock on the doors. I, I have a word from the Lord. This is what he wants you to do. Will you invite him in and offer him some coffee or uh, something to eat? Yes, now, the reason I said it is because someone I was reading in the paper about an individual said that there was somebody, he didn't understand who it was. He and his wife were sitting in the shade tree one cool afternoon. Mm -hmm. and Someone walked up in the yard and was talking to him, and he invited him to sit down. And he gave him some some uh, lemonade. Mm -hmm. And the thing of it is, he never could find out. The individual never told him the name. I don't know if he asked the name. I guess the way that he was talking to him, he must have figured that this is somebody from the now earlier because uh, he talked like he was highly intelligent. He talked like he was a man of God. He would talk. He was talking like um, uh, he was sincere about the things that he was telling him. Mm -hmm. But reading in the in the, in the in the paper there that I was looking at, he never found out who it was. And all of his neighbors would tell him that we didn't see nobody over to your house. <laughs> he said I was sitting under the tree. But said, we didn't see anybody. I said. That go to show you things happen that nobody is supposed to know about except you. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like uh, Saul when he was knocked off of his horse and God was talking to him. But the soldiers couldn't hear him, even though they were right there with him. They couldn't hear him talking to Saul. Saul could hear him, but they couldn't. And that was telling me right there that Sometime the Lord talked to us, and he only wants you to hear what it is that's being said. If he wanted everybody to know what he was saying, he would have said it out loud, they could hear it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that he didn't say it out loud, I'm saying that he didn't want anyone else to hear. And sometimes when he talked to us, we don't listen when the Lord is talking to us. We are so focused on having things our way. We have to realize that we can't have things our way. We have to have it according to the scripture. And if we want to have joy, we're going to have things, are going to do things according to the scripture. And when we pray, we are going to pray. Uh, with the understanding that we're going to give God all of the glory. Amen. We're going to give him all of the praises of the things that uh, he's given praises for the things that he's done for us and the things that he's done for individuals in the world. And the, the world over, the Lord deserve all of the glory that we can give him. We understand from the things that happened in Las Vegas. Anytime you are shooting more than 100 rounds within 10, 15 minutes, you could kill about 100 people. But in this case, he, was, he had shot more than 100 rounds in 10 minutes. And just thanks be to the Almighty God that only uh, 59 were killed and you have a lot of them that were injured. But looking at our scripture, if you look at uh, Ezekiel and some of the others in the Old Testament where when they went out to war, when they killed 10,000 people, 
-hmm. And we only talking about what, 59 people? Mm -hmm. They killed 10,000 people. They had a song out one time about they they killed, I think it was 10,000, Saul mm -hmm. killed 5,000 or something like that. And this is something that we can't find them, find them today. Mm -hmm. This is something that if that happened, we will know what to do. We will know if we supposed to jump up or down, run around in circles, or what we're supposed to do. But in order for us to have joy in everything that we do, we need to follow God's instruction. Amen. Not today only. Not tomorrow only. Every day for sure. If we're a child of God, we want to make sure that God is with us all the time. And the only way that we can have joy is that we serve the Lord according to his will. Amen. If we don't serve him according to the scripture, then we, our service won't be accepted accepted unto him. He won't hear us. We're just wasting time. We might as well be somewhere else doing something else because if it's not acceptable to him, it is a waste of time. That's it. And if we think that the law is going to accept just any kind of worship, then we're going to be sadly mistaken. When it comes time for judge us to appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and we're going to have to give an account of what we have done here on earth, whether mm -hmm. good or bad, he's, I'm talking about Jesus, is going to be the righteous judge. And he is going to say, who's going to enter over here into everlasting life? And who's going to be there? Mm -hmm. In other words, the sheep on the right hand side and the goats on the mm -hmm. left hand side. And it's going to be a terrible thing when we come before him and he say, I know you not. Yeah. But you, you go on to tell him, say, Lord, I've done this, huh? He said, but I, he said, depart from me. I know you're not. You said, but, he said, no, I don't know you. For a reason being, in this particular instance, when you do things, did you do, do you do them for the Lord or do you do them for self? If you do them for self, in other words, you get paid for it. You do them for self. You can't say I'm doing this for myself and the Lord. It has to be one or the other. <laughs> and the thing we want to do that's uh, scriptural, we want to make sure that we do it for the Lord. Amen. Because if we do it for ourselves, we've been paid already. Mm -hmm. There's no place for you to go. You've been paid. You can't go before the Lord and say, I did I this. He said, but I, I don't know you. Depart from me, ye workers of the mm -hmm. And that's going to be a sad saying, you know, because you mm -hmm. see, all this time I thought I was working for the Lord, and I was working for me. You know, and, and me can't give you uh, uh, no parts of heaven. Me can only give you all of the parts down below. And that's not where we want to go. We, you spend too much time in church worshiping the Lord. But if you're not worshiping according to the scripture, you're worshiping in vain. Right. That's it. We all want to be a part of the heavenly host. Everybody in here. Mm -hmm. Is there someone that don't want to be a part of it? Everybody want to be a part? Okay. Everybody want to be a part. And so, 
And you're going to be a part as long as you stay focused all of the time. And stay joyful. Rejoice in the Lord all of the time. Amen. Don't let nobody take away your joy. Amen. You say, how can anybody take away my joy? Uh, whenever Thank you get you. upset, somebody mm -hmm. take your joy right. away. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus didn't get upset and let anybody take his joy away except a few times you will find in the scripture. I said, we want to be like Peter. You know, Peter, he used to get upset. And lots of people don't talk about John, the uh, one that uh, Jesus, I believe, he was talking to in, in uh, Revelation. He said he was kind of fiery and, and he was he would get upset. And Peter, he would get upset. But the thing of it is they all repented and came back into the fold and were saved. Amen. All of them were saved as far as I'm aware of. Everybody was working for the law. They were saved. Because they followed the law and they did exactly what he asked them to do or told them to do. We have to be like Isaiah. You look at Isaiah chapter 26 and verse number 3, where it says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. And can the Lord trust in us? If you keep your joy, he can trust in you because mm -hmm. he knows you're not going to go astray. Amen. You'll be like his disciples were. You'll follow him. You'll keep him everywhere in the mind. And never let him out of your mind. And we would always remember that your moderation be known unto all men. This is Philippians chapter 5. I mean, this is verse 5, chapter 4, verse 5. And this is how we are supposed to keep from retreating. You know, when things go wrong and we don't understand what's going on. And we are upset with the world and with ourselves. And uh Paul is telling us here in verse 5, how can we rejoice always? Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Here are some synonyms for gentleness, big heartedness, kindness, mm -hmm. charitableness, magnanimous, generosity. And it goes on to tell us that the uh, no human being, what we would try to do is withdraw from the problem that we are having. But he tells us this is not what we need to do. We need uh, to, we don't need to harbor hopelessness. We don't need to withdraw from it. But we need to be inclusive in displaying gentleness. Notice mm -hmm. he says to display uh, gentleness to all, not just some, he says, to all. You need to treat everybody kind with kindness. Doesn't make any difference who they are. And we want to make sure that when we pray, the things that we, what we are supposed to do and not do. Mm -hmm. And but it says, this is a, uh, chapter 6, I mean not chapter 6, verse 6 in chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 6, it says, But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I'm reading this over again because of, this is very important. Don't forget, let your request be made known to God. Notice the phrase with thanksgiving. I think it's something that we learned from... Uh, the time when we were small, coming mm -hmm. up, mom and dad used to tell you, uh, give uh, 
tell the person that you're getting something from, thank you mm -hmm. for it. And we'll get something from the Lord. We need to thank Him. Amen. I say stay focused mm -hmm. on the things that you're doing for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And this is a, the, the second epistle. And, and Paul is writing, he says, Beloved, when I write unto you in both which I stir up your pure mind by way of a remembrance, that you may be mindful of the word which we were which was spoken before by the Holy Prophet and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. It isn't just a quote, it isn't enough just to quote scripture. It must be memorized, meditated upon, and it needs to be in our head, more or less. Uh, what I want trying to say is stay focused. We need to be focused on, on all of it. And just remember that the Lord loves us because we are doing the things that He has commanded us to do. And uh, a few other things we want to remember that the things that we do that we shouldn't do, the, the Lord says in Scripture. And Matthew chapter 15, verses 7 through 9, is tell us but what he, what he is saying, that we honor him with our lips, but our, but our hearts are far from him. In other words, we can't fool the Lord. We want to make sure that when we say we are serving the Lord, we are serving the Lord. That we want to remember what it says. Remember that his disciples that were tramping off the, the coin of someone that was, when they were going, uh, I guess across a field, and individuals were watching them, and they came to Jesus and they said, why do your disciples trample the, the uh, commandments of their, I guess their, something like the uh, bishop. It wasn't a bishop, he is, he is a priest, I believe. He said, why? And the Lord reminded him, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles the man, it's what comes out of the mouth. That's in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 11. One, uh, one other verse I want to leave in Matthew chapter 15 and 14. We want to say, after we told everybody everything you can, it says, leave them alone. Let the blind lead the blind. And they both will fall into the ditch. We want to remember that we are all children of God and we need to help each other along our Christian journey. In closing the plan of salvation, let us know that we must hear the gospel, Romans 10 and 17. It tells us that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mark 16 and 16 tell us that he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Repent of all past sins, Acts 2 and 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Confess, Matthew 10 and 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. And be baptized, 10 and 48. And Jesus will add you to his church, to his church. He can do that because the church belongs to him, Jesus. Amen. 
you don't belong to any man, so no one can say, well, we're going to add you to the church. The only thing they can say is that we're going to baptize you if you're qualified to be baptized. Mm -hmm. We have to remember that some, there are lots of people out in the world that is not Christian. So whenever we go up and down the streets, we need to talk to individuals and try to save them from themselves. Right. We know that uh, we can save them if we can get them to listen to them. And if they want to be saved, maybe there is someone here that haven't had Lord's help for this afternoon. Uh, and would like the Lord's help. Everybody had the Lord's help. Okay. They had the Lord's help again. There's one other act that we can do, and we remember that.